have to find empirical, there's the word, empiricism, you have to find empirical evidence, observable and measurable evidence to support your argument. You have to do research, you have to do empirical testing. So in science, <coughs> once you have your idea, that's not enough. You now have to give what they would say real life, real measurable and observable evidence that your argument's correct. And then once you've found that, once you've found evidence, your hypothesis, your hypothesis is raised to a thesis, a theory. And that's the name of the game in the scientific method. It's, it's like, I like to con, uh, compare this to a court of law. So the court of law of science looks something like this. You go in with your argument. You're a lawyer, science, lawyer of science. <clears throat> you walk into the courtroom, and who's the jury and the judge? Your peers, with other, other PhDs, other psychologists, other scientists. You walk into that courtroom, and you present your argument, your evidence. And if they agree that this is solid evidence, and it's well thought out, and it's a very solid thing, they'll accept it, and it now will become a theory. It'll become part of the scientific literature. And then other people will add to it or atta attack it and tear it down. So it's actually a living organism. It doesn't stop here. The theory can be challenged. And once that theory is challenged, it becomes another a new hypothesis is added. So it just keeps going around and around like this. And this is why you find that theories change. The theory of evolution has changed over the past hundred years since it was first in officially introduced by Darwin and Wallace. So this is... Uh, this is um, a living thing that keeps changing. So, of course, what you learn about scientific theory here today will be different 10 years from now, be different next year. A lot of the stuff <coughs> happens that fast. That's the scientific method. Anyone have any questions on this at all? Thanks. Crystal clear. This should be the second time you're hearing this in life, at least. Now, let's look here. at this thing, the middle stage, research. And let's really examine how scientific psychologists do their research. We saw an example of Kurt Lewin. Kurt Lewin had a hypothesis. Kurt Lewin's hypothesis was that a democratic, you remember the leadership style study? He set up an experiment. He said that the uh, most effective leadership style that kept people the most content made them productive and kept them the most content in a classroom setting or in society was the democratic leadership style. He also had a couple other hypotheses, and that was that fascist dictatorship style would end up in people becoming resentful and angry towards each other, things like this, that an anarchistic or laissez-faire leadership style would uh, cause people to go into chaos and get nothing done. He had a few hypotheses going up there. So he had his hypothesis, now he needed evidence. So what did he do? He used one of the four major research methods. He used the experimental method. Now this is where we're going to explain, expand things a little bit from intro to psych to social psych. You know that in intro to psych you learned about two group design, an experimental group and a control group, right? Remember we did this study, if some of those of you who had me, we did this designed a study where the hypothesis was drinking coffee before a test will raise test scores. And of course we set up a phony experiment. Control group had decaf coffee, you know, 16 ounce decaf, black coffee. Took a math test, and then we looked at the results. We then compared that to the experimental group. The experimental group got 16 ounces of caffeinated coffee, black coffee. Took the same math test and looked at the results, and we saw that there was a statistically different a statistical difference in the class averages, and therefore we can make the causal claim that caffeine increases test scores, right? Mm -hmm. And experimental method is the only one that you can claim cause and effect for in scientific psychology. Cause and effect. Well, if you know, if you remember, the thing about Lewin's or Levine's study was that it wasn't just two groups. How many groups were there? Three. Three right. groups. There were three groups, and those groups, there was no clear-cut control group. And there was an experimental variable going on in each group. Experimental variable, and we call that the independent variable. The experimental variable was the teacher. 
And the teacher, it was an experimental group, they you compared three different experimental conditions. They're, and they served, some of them served as a control group against the other three, right, the other two. So you had one experimental or independent variable, which was the teacher was very rigid and tied up real tight and, you know, fascist, auto, uh, autocratic. And then the other experimental variable, independent variable, in another group was the teacher was laid back, rolled up his sleeves, got into the game, helped the kids, democratic style. The third research experimental group was laissez-faire, anarchy. Let it be, just didn't even really interact with the kid, let them do whatever they want, even left the room. So we actually had a three-group design. We had a three-group design. And they all were experimental groups. But when you compare the three together, they also all became control groups against the other. Right? The only thing that changed was the teaching style. So you had the autocratic, observe their behavior, the kids' behavior, right? And there was a criteria for how to observe their behavior. We'll talk about that in a second. And you looked at results. Then we had the democratic style. Observe their behavior. And looked at the results. And then we had the laissez-faire, which I can never remember how to spell. Oh, L A I S S. How do you spell it? L A S S. L A I. Yeah. L A I S S. Wait a second. Somebody say it slowly. L A. L A. L A S S. I S S. You got it. No, it's L A I. An artist. Test. It's four feet pink version. Observe. Then observe the behavior and then look at the results. All right. Observe the results. Cool. And then you just compare those results to each other. Right? So we have three experimental groups, but when you look at the one experimental group compared to the other two, those other two become control groups against that. So this is a little more complicated. And you guys are going to find, if you study psychology even more, that these people get into the most complicated setups for experiments that you, it's just baffling to even understand how they're set up. And I think it's a bit of a hobby for some people it's to play the mental gymnastics, you know, setting up these crazy studies. So this is the, the experimental method. And if you remember in the experimental method, we have an experimental variable. It's also called the independent variable. And that's the thing that you give each group, the independent variable. It's the thing you give each group. It's independent. It doesn't depend on anything else. The dependent variable are the results. This is the dependent variable. You see the dependent variable depends on the independent variable. The results depend on the experiment, the, on the thing you're given each group, right? So independent variable is independent. Dependent variable is dependent on the independent. So to make this really simple, an independent variable is the thing you're giving the group. The experimental condition you're giving the group. Caffeine, leadership style, electric shocks, whatever it is, right? The dependent variable are the results that you get from giving that thing. That should be pretty straightforward. And sometimes textbooks make it more difficult than it really is. So you'd say that independent variable uh, <coughs> would be uh, the method. Independent, no, the, the whole, that's not the method. Independent variable is part of the method. So the independent variable would be the, the, uh, the experimental variable, the thing that you're giving the group to see what effect it might have. Does that make sense? The cause and then the effect. Of yes. The, so the independent variable would be the cause, the dependent variable would be the effect. GP just brought that to my mind. You got that? The independent, this is good. Independent variables the cause, dependent variables the, the effect. That is very, that's excellent. That, that makes it much clearer for me, too. Cool. So that's one of the four methods of, of research that you can use. You don't have to use experimentation. Some psychologists refuse to use experimentation. 
Does anyone know which school of thought? Anyone remember which school of thought this, uh, actually feels that human beings 